Hi, everyone. This week, we have a special episode for you from another show called Show Me Your Tech Stack. On this episode, I spoke with Frank Dorval, VP of Marketing from Sheets and Giggles, a sustainable bedding and mattress brand that just wants to have fun with it. Frank and I chatted about the art of being punny in marketing, why scalability isn't necessarily the end goal, and how a small team can do big things when they're generally trying to build a connection with every customer. So hope you enjoy this week's crossover episode. Why don't we kick off this this episode of uh, Show Me Your Tech Stack. Um, nice. Welcome, Frank. Uh, Frank's visiting us from Sheets and Giggles. And uh, would you like to do a, just a quick intro of, of your new role? Congratulations. And, Thanks. Uh, and, and the beautiful products they have there. Yeah. Um, so, hi, I'm Frank, uh, VP over... Uh, VP of marketing over at uh, Sheets and Giggles, um, formerly retention marketing, uh, director of retention marketing. And um, uh, my anchor skill set is mostly uh, email marketing, SMS, uh, direct mail, in-app, push notifications. Anything automated is in my wheelhouse, um, lifecycle and retention, subscription strategy, stuff like that. Um, I've been working in uh marketing for maybe eight years now God. your background's impressive tenuity uh, I mean, <laughs> thanks you know, no, you know folks today to... we... <laughs> is that your your wall yeah. of awards by the way oh, I was... no it's it's just art i me and my partner collect a lot of art because uh funny enough actually i have a degree in sculpture i don't know how i ended up in marketing don't ask me <laughs> uh, uh yeah. mine's in uh you know sustainable design yeah oh that's cool <laughs> I, that's why i love your product so much yeah yeah our um uh, yeah so sheets and giggles uh sell sustainable bedding is is the short version um but we do it through puns <laughs> uh most of our marketing strategy is be funny <laughs> is is the quote from chris cote is that the surf announcer chris cote yeah, Chris Cody. Um, I'm actually not a Levitard listener, but uh, we have a couple of um, uh, big Levitard podcast fans on our team, including Colin, who's their CEO. Um, uh, there was just like some crazy, funny brand partnership stuff that happened organically. And Chris Cody ended up being like, a strange sports face of our company, which was, it was just one of the weirdest organic brand partnerships I've ever seen happen. Uh, <laughs> it started because our CEO went to do a roast of Dan Levitard and was one of the sponsors and they gave him like five minutes on stage, but then he ended up doing like a 15 minute thing and went way over. And then the joke became about Colin, like, <laughs> talking for way too long and then it just kind of like spiraled back and forth on twitter and then just exploded it was it was one of the strangest things i've ever seen <laughs> well did you get any anything out of the the social aspect of it oh yeah we we are we had like an explosive list growth which is really funny in our in our email and sms programs it was like i think we got like 12,000 emails in like a week. It was nuts. Um, and then SMS, not so much, but uh, it like the, those people are rabid. <laughs> they have been some of our uh, most loyal customers to date, which What's is the really interesting. What's the podcast? The Dan Levitard show. Um, Dan Levitard. Let me see. I think it's called DraftKings. I'll have to ask my my direct report is a big fan and he would be shaking his head if he knew that i <laughs> didn't know the name of the podcast he's gonna he's gonna watch this later and be like what are you doing <laughs> i like your uh you, you why don't we just go completely off then um your shade <laughs> of green in the background very natural i like it We've oh, got, yeah i've got you can see ours my green here i think we have the same same green yeah it's really similar mine's like uh foresty green um i painted it at the beginning of the pandemic because i was just like i need a lot of green in my life if i'm going to be stuck in this office <laughs> yeah and then uh 
just kept adding to it. So yeah, I have these like, I have this giant archway that uh, it's like 12 feet long. So I had to put these like theater curtains mm -hmm. that match the wall, which I, is really great. Convenient. I think this is kind of like the standard home yeah, we we threw in a, a barn door to cover up. Yeah, the, I was gonna do a barn door, but the barn door like, was too heavy. Yeah, <laughs> there should be a there should be a like a, a you know Bravo should do like a home office. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that would be really funny. I mean, that's the thing. you never know what is gonna hit with with marketing. Yeah, you, know, you have to be, you have to be so creative in that campaign. Did the did you run any sort of uh, personalized uh, promotion on site for that lead capture for anyone coming from that podcast oh yeah Link. yeah we did a few things we created a dedicated landing page with some sign up forms and dedicated discounts for them we did uh like just do no pop-ups we uh implemented this uh animation on our pop-ups that was actually really interesting um it was like one of the first times that i had implemented animation and a pop-up rather than one of the banners uh at the top of the website um we've been doing like more organic stuff so like colin will go onto twitter and just anything that's relevant if you they i think they put out podcast episodes every day so colin will like listen to it and then make a discount code that's relevant to it just as a joke <laughs> And they always yeah. perform really well, which is really funny. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm going to, I need a, I need to connect with Colin after this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's not scalable. I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of white work. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's a, you know, our, our jobs are to drive marketing crazy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't think Colin drives me crazy uh most of its crazy ideas are actually really fantastic ideas <laughs> it's just depends on whether or not we have the time to do them <laughs> yeah um yeah how would you like me to prioritize that <laughs> <That's the response. laughs> yeah pretty much yeah we've actually as a joke uh we recently swapped over to asana and we created a uh uh like marketing request form so now anytime colin tries to send me something i just send them the link to the request form and don't actually respond <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i don't think he's I noticed mean, that i've done that yet <laughs> well let let's talk about that further in terms of you're in a new role new responsibilities what mm -hmm. what's stressing you out let's talk martech oh, stacks like are you switching stacks or introducing you're just trying to yeah um what kept you up last just... night yeah <laughs> well a lot of things <laughs> uh one, I was just really so entirely unrelated to the to the marketing tech. The marketing stack is the uh, very excited about the student loan stuff. Um, congratulations to any of you out there whose student loans are getting wiped out. Mine are too. Very excited. Yes, uh, and and they ramped it up even more to twenty, an additional ten k. So it's at twenty, I believe, mm -hmm. for certain. Yeah. for the Pell cool. Grant. Yeah, yeah, we've been talking about it internally nonstop, but. Uh, that kept me up yesterday because I was excited. But uh, <laughs> what keeps me up most nights as far as our our uh, marketing is concerned, um, we're really trying to figure out our uh, top of funnel traffic. We're just trying to get more eyeballs on the site. We, we have really great CRO. Um, we have above average conversion rates on our site. Our emails and SMS are incredible. Um, uh, most of our like down funnel channels always perform really well, but we have we're struggling really to get get eyeballs on the site. Uh, so we're working on things like SEO and influencer strategy, affiliate PR stuff like that, um, which is a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I, I have experience in SEO, but not so much like influencer and organic social and affiliate and stuff like that. So we're working with some some other agencies to help us out with that. But uh, learning a lot really fast about um just trying to get eyeballs on the site <laughs> and the um, right eyeballs yeah the right eyeballs yeah yeah uh <laughs> which is not an easy thing to do you would think it'd be easy but it's not <laughs> well then you the attribution Complex. trying to figure you know when when they are there understanding mm -hmm. you know the attribution model of who they are where they came from 
the the, mm -hmm. the whole cycle. The yeah. I you you mentioned your CRO is great. Mm -hmm. uh, can we kind of explore that a little in terms of like yeah we yeah we've just done a lot of testing our our website from a code perspective needs a lot of uh, zhuzhing up, <laughs> uh, but um in general our our website is performing it we have a few different ways to help people convert um obviously there's the pdps our product detail pages um on those are like upsell modules uh, we have upsell modules in the cart uh and during checkout using another app called after sell which uh i believe shopify just released it recently i think it's a shopify managed app um I've created that. Uh, and that's that's been really wonderful. It's it's it what it does is add like this intermediate uh experience in between clicking checkout and your order confirmation page. Um and we'll give you like these little upsell things where you can be like, yeah. oh, do you want to add this to your order for whatever? It's great. Um we've also implemented stuff like Loyalty and referral with smile.io. Love them. Super, super affordable, super easy to implement. Uh, yeah. I managed to turn it around in one day, installed in the app, day. and got it live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, speed and control mm -hmm. is what I hear a lot mm -hmm. about. And yeah. yeah. That's something you look at when you're looking at different apps to, to add to your, your stack. Yeah. A lot of, so I'm very staunch on, uh, uh, direct integrations. If if the apps, agencies, uh, uh, platforms that we're using aren't integrating, then it it just makes it harder on us. Um, my my whole thing is like we have to automate as much as possible, integrate as much as possible because we're only a small team, but we have so many things that we have to work on at all times. Um, the the only way we're ever going to manage to get through it all is if it's mostly automated. So. Uh, we have a lot of Shopify apps that are helping us that, that all interconnect, um, not only with like analytics, but but like Shopify talks to Klaviyo and Klaviyo talks to Gorgeous and Gorgeous talks to like whatever. And it just, it all interconnects and it's great. And, and loop returns, we've, we've implemented loop returns, which is great too. Um, the, and that, that has been utterly essential in order to... Uh, to move forward with things that you know it's funny about the you mentioned loop returns is that mm -hmm. you know, when you're looking at making a purchase online you're getting putting your having empathy for your shopper understanding their journey and what's in their head and oftentimes you know shipping is the number one reason people don't check out whether it's cost or unclear when it's going to ship when they're going to get it but it's such a pain to return things. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Like, is yeah. this brand, does this brand understand that? And is this brand going to make it easy for me re to return it? Uh, so that's really, um, that's great to hear. Are you happy with, do you feel like Loop is helping in that regard? Oh yeah. Our ticket volume uh, plummeted, which was great. It, it made things so much easier for our CS team um, between Gorgeous and Loop alone. Uh, being able to automate stuff, creating macros. Um, I, I have a lot of intimate knowledge of CS systems just because I, I'm what my my favorite thing to do anytime I start a, start working at a company is to make best friends with all of the CS people because they're the ones that are going to help me with retention and stuff in this. Um, and I just have so much like automation knowledge that it's easy for me to just hop into Gorgeous and be like, oh, here, I created the segment for you or a filter or whatever. And now you can see all this analytics or whatever. So the, I, I always buddy up. <laughs> when you mentioned, you mentioned macro. Yeah. Can you kind of explain that a little deeper for, for, for the listeners? Oh, yeah. Um, a macro is, is like from, from Gorgeous's perspective, it's like, the, the way that we're using it is if a certain keyword shows up, the macro will automatically uh, uh, create this uh, response. It won't send it immediately because we, we like our CS people to like glance at it, adjust anything if necessary, but it, it sends out these templates of responses based off of certain keywords. So if you have like 
a product defect, like a manufacturing defect, and uh, certain keywords that that show up with that that we know because we we pulled all the the tickets and done like word clouds to see like what what shows up as highest. Um, it'll spit out uh, dynamic uh responses that cs can then just like adjust slightly and then send out and it, it's yeah. like everything yeah. that we've done has been to make things faster yeah and that was your team setting up for them oh no 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 cs set that up themselves yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i've i've helped with other things like, yeah like custom views and filters and analytics and stuff but not so much the macros they They've been wonderful with the macros. <laughs> well, I ask that because, you know, when we talk about marketing and its role in companies is really, it's traditionally people think marketing drive traffic to the site, you know, but it's really your role is to now interface between all the departments to provide them tools essentially to, to be successful, which in the end makes marketing more successful because you have a positive shopping experience. People are going to have mm -hmm. your, your repeat visitors are going to come shoppers are going to come back but it yeah. requires you know it, it, what that requires is a, a positive shopping experience post-purchase connecting mm -hmm. the shipping connecting the returning making it all work together through the whole marketing stack to create yeah. this customer experience which is truly what i think our jobs are is to make that experience great for the customer along with yeah. the product yeah it sounds like you have and a that's problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's another reason why I'm, I'm so gung-ho about like the first people that I, I make friends with is always CS because retention is so uh, dependent on a good CS experience and post-purchase experience in general. If, if somebody comes to the site and then has a bunch of problems after their purchasing experience, then they're not going to come back. And with, with, uh, with everything that we've set up, we have really strong repeat rates, um, mostly above average, uh, but our repeat rates are very, like the the repeat cycle is very long because we most, from for, for, for the most part, we've only sold sheets and you don't really need to replace your sheets that often. It's like every two years, roughly. Uh, mm -hmm. So our, repeat rates over two years or half of all cohorts are coming back to repeat which is insane um but our biggest struggle has been trying to accelerate that with new products i'm just thinking to my house and like between dogs destroying sheets kids destroying yeah. sheets. <laughs> yeah you know you, you get a new bed um did i see you have you eucalyptus eucalyptus mattresses now Mm -hmm. Yeah, we recently yeah. recently released a yeah. uh, eucalyptus mattress, and then we just sent out a teaser about our mattress protector that we're releasing later on this week. The uh, you know, just thinking through the whole, you know, when do you need sheets? Like new beds, boom. You know, there's 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 so much interesting stuff. I grab my mm -hmm. phone because you keep mentioning CS, and I'm a hundred percent believer in that. You know, following the Nordstrom's model where customer service is everything mm -hmm. and you know to me really positive customer success is the most powerful sales and marketing tool you can possibly have um, it's what people talk about more importantly talk about negative but if you go above and beyond they will talk about positive and then and they know yeah. if you're there they will come back and and shop with you it's all about creating the right experience and mm -hmm. i i just i did a screenshot of our support channel that I, uh, uh, you can't read it, but I literally took this screenshot, sent it to marketing <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I said, hey, here's a great example of one, you know, our support going above and beyond, but also showcasing how our pro how advanced our product is and like a strategy. I'm like, this might yeah. be really good content for marketing. Like what if we promoted this and it showcases one, our product showcases our customer service. And, and it, it's like an indirect way of speaking to how we operate as a company. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Again, that's what we're doing. I love that. Yeah. Well, it's... I sent it to them. We'll see if they. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we, we also have stuff that like we have a customer feedback channel in Slack um, where CS or, or Colin, Colin likes to go into gorgeous sometimes to just see stuff. 
uh, where if we get any good or bad feedback, we drop it in there. And then sometimes we'll reach out to the person and be like, hey, can we feature you in something? Um, but a lot of our strategy, but this actually leads into a really interesting point. Um, and what interests me most about Sheets and Giggles, the way that we approach marketing is that like Colin and I both feel very strongly that like genuine connection is incredibly important. Um, but that's so hard to scale. It's it like, I'm talking like one-to-one, -one, you're texting a conversation with somebody uh, with a live person type stuff or like actually interacting with Colin on Twitter or somebody from the marketing team. Um, it's uh, one of the things that, that we really want to scale but have not figured out a way to do it yet is creating those connections um, because there's so much like, automated marketing that feels so bland and uh, everybody's using the same templates and the same email flows and SMS flows and copy and everybody's just kind of copying from one another. Um, we really want to stand out with the way that we're connecting with customers. We want it to feel like you're actually talking to a person, even if you're just getting an ad, um, which like getting an ad, you're not going to be able to do that, but <laughs> uh we want it to feel like homey and remind people that there are actual people behind the screen um, uh, and vice versa. Uh, we have not figured out a way to scale that yet. <laughs> it's not an easy thing to scale. I don't think anybody's figured it out yet, but yeah. Do you consider that, it, we were talking about this yesterday, account-based marketing? Yeah. Um, yeah, it is it is very ABM oriented, but you know, I hadn't actually thought about the connection between the two. Um it like has ABM kind of a negative, it, you know, it's one of those buzzwords, but that you know, it yeah it, it really is, you know, something I was having this conversation yesterday, and it's really about well, there is a lot of account-based marketing happening off-site but it's when they come to the site, are we speaking to them on a one-to-one -one basis and how do we do yeah. that? You know, yeah. and it, we the thing is we're, we're able to do that now. We're really starting to move into that world now that we, we can do easily throw off automated personalization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially with just, you know, like, so <laughs> spoiler alert, I've been using just, you know, for like four or five years over, five different companies that I've worked for, uh, freelancing and, and actual like in, in, in-house, uh, marketing, but, uh, people, I love just to know <laughs> that's the spoiler alert. Um, so, uh, being able to personalize in that way and segment these, these super specific types of banners and ad, not ads, banners and pop-ups and, uh, like messaging experiences, like just the other day, we implemented a really <laughs> kind of a funny situation with uh, late night shoppers where after a certain point, we'll show like random discount codes at the top. That's like, you've been up really late. Why don't you just use a discount code and go back to bed? <laughs> like, stuff like that. It's like random personalization, kind of surprise and delight stuff. Which is, which I love hearing. It's like, even one of those things where, you know, I, I wonder what percentage of in, uh, like Instagram influence shopping happens from midnight till like 3 a.m. ish. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, for me, you know, I have two little ones. And, you know, if I'm up at 2 a.m., you know, whatever, for whatever reason, I'll, you know, I bought, the, you know, I bought a couple things and I know my wife has because yeah. you know, you're on Instagram and you click it. You're like, Oh, oh. Wow, that back roller. I do have back pain. That back roller looks awesome. Click. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that. Ad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you can do it by G, you know, geo targeted by the region. You can do it by time. Like that's mm -hmm. where, that's where retailing can be fun. You know, and mm -hmm. if you're given the freedom, it sounds like Colin gives you that freedom to explore and, and throw a lot of things at the wall to see what sticks. That's when yeah. can, can be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that like internally we, we put a lot of emphasis on um, uh, just like, 
I hate the word brainstorming because it, it, it has such a negative connotation these days. But but did you say we spend a lot of or brainstorming? Brainstorming. Yeah. Well, I know you like Sorry. puns, so so maybe brainstorming. Yeah, well, could be the brainstorming is kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we spend a lot of time just trying to come up with really funny ideas. Sometimes we will. It's it's really funny. This actually happened yesterday where we were on on our midweek check-in the marketing team was and we finished going through everything talking through numbers and tasks and whatever and then we just kind of organically moved into this conversation that spiked off of a joke uh <laughs> and then we just kept riffing until we were like okay add it to asana <laughs> we need to we need to try and do this uh that's the kind of stuff that happens with us it's just like we we like to have fun. We like to joke about stuff, and sometimes those jokes will actually take shape into, uh, into an ad or like a just do no pop up or whatever. You know. I remember there was something funny on your site. I mean, there's a lot of funny things going on on like <laughs> obviously Harvey. Oh, I yeah. laugh. One thing I laughed about is your, your photos. You have people drinking red wine with white bed sheets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we like to be that. subversive. One one of the funny things about the way that we approach like brand imagery is we like to be subtly subversive sometimes. So there's like we'll take like an elevated image that might appear on like Bolin Branch or like Brooklyn or whatever. We might make a funny joke off of it where it's like instead of like like a woman reading like a book in bed about, I don't know, whatever that they're like reading a book about tractors or something like really subtle subversion, which is <laughs> like, we try and surprise and delight in all kinds of little areas where you're just like, there's another image that, that uh, is kind of controversial, <laughs> but it's really not. It's just like Colin and two other guys like sitting in bed all together drinking wine and they've got like face masks on and people were like, oh, it's like a polyamory couple, like not couple, thruple. There's there we go. Thruple. <laughs> well, when I uh, when I was, you know, shopping through your site, I got a sense of fun. Yeah. I totally yeah. picked up on that. But then I also got a sense, you know, of product because literally i was here's can i throw out some just market stuff here absolutely always i was like this was a few weeks ago before i even knew we were doing this interview what is one thing that probably everybody hates doing uh, Making it yeah well yeah. yeah, I was going to say trying to put a comforter into a duvet cover. Yeah, okay. Oh, there you go. There's <laughs> another true. one. There's another one. Um, I jumped in there because that was a pretty broad question. I wasn't sure if I could yeah. direct it. <laughs> I should have introed it with when it comes to bedding. <laughs> um, it's such a pain and no one likes making a bed, but find me someone that does. Maybe there are people that like making beds. I personally don't. Um, yeah. and one of the number one things that is the most annoying is you finally make the bed and you realize halfway through you put the sheet on the wrong way. And I noticed yeah. you have markers that say lower left corner, I think. Yeah. Right. So on all of our, our sheet sets, uh, in the fitted sheet, there is a little tag, an extra tag that says, uh, uh, bottom left corner or top right corner. Cause they're interchangeable. Uh, yeah. based off of the way that you're you're swapping it around and you should uh good tip for people you should always swap your sheets every once in a while don't always put it down in the left corner because it'll that's your feet you, move a lot more at night than your torso you want even wear well my wife yeah. has said well that's why i buy striped sheets yeah well our striped sheets are actually my favorite the durability of those has been insane we use uh striped sheets here at home uh me and my partner both uh, uh love the striped sheets <laughs> but do they go horizontal yeah. or vertical <laughs> they're only vertical we only have vertical <laughs> but i mean it's those it's like those when you look at kickstarter projects where people have like solved something that just annoy people uh that was my idea i'm like we should just start a sheet company 
we're always trying to fit, you know, being in retail, it's like, we should always see ideas, but it's like, no, I'd never want to see inventory again. Um, <laughs> but this one, I was like, what if your entire marketing was like making, talking about the ease of making your bed? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Even if we made it easy, I don't know if people would do it. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> We've even tried making it easy for me and my partner. And we're just like, no, <laughs> it's always a fight. We just kind of like toss the the comforter and make it look halfway decent but I don't, we, we're not those people that make the bed every day uh i think no that's the thing that is that is a thing there's people that mm -hmm. like they do it first thing in the morning people who don't care and then there's people yeah. that have that don't like multiple sheets or comforters you know it's just i just mm -hmm. want to cheat and a comforter yeah whole world yeah crazy yeah <laughs> so, we have an entire it's actually funny we have an entire uh, blog about flat sheets. So there, you've got like your fitted sheet that that goes on your bed, and then there's flat sheets, which is the one that goes in between the fitted and the comforter. We have an entire blog about why top sheets are important. <laughs> uh, highly recommend people go and try and find that. Uh, it's on our blog page. But uh, like we did a survey. It's yeah. good. Uh, I, was, I was just going to say, we did a survey and most people don't use top sheets. And we're just like, why? <laughs> you get one. <laughs> well, I was going to say, it could be like Alka Seltzer where, you know, you can double your, yeah. your average order value. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you, all, you know, you, with products, it's all about being passionate about it. And, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, my prior life, we sold snowboards, which was easy to be passionate about. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, not every product you can get passionate about, but it sounds like you guys are doing that there. You know, when we opened, mm -hmm. we talked about, you know, we were kind of trying to understand the stresses of your days and, and marketing and new role are there, you know, who, you know, the marketing world, you know, it's a community. Um, are you what are you hearing from other marketers, you know, in your, your new role and prior role in terms of, you know, what they're facing do you, or where do you, where do you learn from this? You know, do you have a group? Where do you learn? What are you hearing in terms of like stresses upon marketers present day? Yeah, that's, that's a really great question. Most of my networking comes from just a retention and life cycle background. So I'm still trying to build out more like, acquisition and growth um uh, but our 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 one of our guys on the team is really big on acquisition so him and i have been networking with his network uh but most of my people are actually in the email geek slack um uh if you go to emailgeeks.io i believe uh they mostly handle making sure i have that right the old yeah. IOs. Yeah. So uh, they actually post jobs on emailgeeks.io. But if you, if you Google uh, email geeks Slack, um, uh, it's invite only. Um, you have to apply to it. Uh, but I've made so many friends in there. Um, uh, so a lot of my marketing ideas, whenever I'm like talking to people, usually come from from just like, going into that slack and being like hey i'm thinking about this thing uh what do y'all think about it and we'll just kind of have a, a conversation email geeks is like one of the most active marketing uh uh groups i've ever seen that have been pretty consistent and everybody knows each other which is great <laughs> that's all I, I just pulled it up that's really yeah. cool do you yeah. that reminds me um Facebook groups and hold mm. hear me out here. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't for you. This is more of consumers. I, I find my wife is heavily influenced from her mom's Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that with your, your company in terms of your product line? Like moms talking in this is very specific in my my life in terms of what I see is that a lot of the purchases that my wife make are influenced by other mothers dealing with the same stuff yeah yeah a lot of our word of mouth actually comes from probably instagram people really love 
taking photos and talking about our stuff. We don't prompt them to do it as far as I know. <laughs> uh, but we do get a lot of like stories on Instagram or somebody will post us, post something about us and tag us. Um, a lot of that word of mouth has really helped. Uh, uh, I can't speak for Facebook because I'm not super active on Facebook. I, I'm still on there, but I kind of abandoned yeah. it. <laughs> you, you and everyone, pretty much everybody else. Yeah. I'm looking at your <laughs> stack. Are you hearing about Instagram? Are you doing anything with kind of the the micro slash nano influencers? No, not they're... yet. That's yeah. That's one of the big things that we're trying to figure out right now is like from a look and feel perspective, how do we get a, a nice solid group of influencers that, that, that can help us build up the brand and a partnership. We help them, they help us. Um, we have not figured that out yet. We're, we're still trying to get a grasp on it. I'm, I'm, I actually, have been talking to a few agencies and platforms about trying to figure out how to automate it. Um, but we're trying to do it as <laughs> affordably as possible. I am, I'm very stingy, not stingy, stingy is a judgmental word. I am frugal when it comes to our marketing budget. <laughs> well, <laughs> Biggest bang for a buck. You have to be, you know, that yeah. we, and that, that, you know, we're a self-funded company, just, you know, mm -hmm. Um, the prior company, the snowboard company, we were self-funded and, you know, we didn't have, I didn't have a marketing budget. When you don't have a budget, you, you actually will create a more healthy, sustainable business because yeah, you build we, yeah. own channels. Yeah. We don't have a marketing budget necessarily, but I do very carefully keep an eye on how much we're spending. <laughs> Because it can it can balloon so fast whenever you're like, oh, let's add this app and this platform and mm -hmm. this agency. And you're like, then you look at your contribution margin and your marketing costs are insane and just eating up your your margin while you're trying to get profitable or make more money, you know? Are you uh, do you mind me asking what um when it comes to the micro influencers, what you're looking at? Or are you still in the early stages? <sighs> oh man, I'm really in the early stages. I had a a uh, call with, I believe they're called Grin. I think they're one of the bigger ones. Um, this is also like very much, very much not my wheelhouse. Uh, influencer and affiliate are probably influencer, affiliate, and PR are my weakest points. So I'm actually like learning on the go, and that's why we're trying to automate it. Do you think that's uh, causing some of your anxieties? Uh. From These word anxieties. I don't know if they're anxieties. You just said you were stressed. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not so much stress or anxiety as it is like, we, we really need to figure out how to start moving in these channels with the least effort possible. So a lot, a lot of the stuff we do internally, we call an 80, 20 rule you do the, uh, it, it's a lot like diminishing returns. You you do uh, everything up to the diminishing return point, and then you stop. And like it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you can go on our website, you'll see things that aren't perfect. We we don't waste time trying to make things everything absolutely perfect because it's just not it's not feasible. So um, like a lot of the the stuff that I'm doing with like trying to find a an automated um influencer platform is just so that i can do the 80 20 stuff and outsource some of it just because i can't do it all my team can't do it all there's just too much to do and too little man hours and i don't want people working really more than 40 view, hours from my perspective of that you would love to be able to test a channel without you know draining all your resources and mm -hmm. get to that like i need i i'm interested but just help me test this so yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. And that so that that's a really great point. I didn't uh I didn't think about that, but that is has been really helpful. It's like most of the platforms that we've ended up with have given us like a 30-day trial so that we can go through and be like, okay, the ROAS is there. Like if we actually paid uh X amount on fees and platform usage fees or whatever, 
um, uh, we know that it's going to give a lot of money. So like a lot of the Shopify apps that we're using, Just Uno gave us a, a short period of trial, which was fantastic. I mean, we, we didn't need it in the end because I was going to go with y'all anyway, <laughs> uh, just because I'm obsessed. But uh, uh, most of the platforms that we've worked with have been ones that are willing to give us a little bit of leeway and trying to figure out like, let us like see a real world application of what, what your platform is going to do for us. And then once that's there, we'll stick with you for as long as we can. And that's kind of what we've been doing. Uh, some of our platforms we've had since forever ago. I don't even know the timing <laughs> way before my time at SNG and I've been here two years. Yeah, that that's actually very insightful for for me. So thank you. It's, I mean, a lot yeah. of it is one reason I love speaking with with our our customers is like understanding your you know what really happens. You know, yeah. <laughs> you can't have empathy unless you you understand the, the realities of the days. And you know, you you know, I I see it with our own team. I see it with people close to me too. The the there's once you get over a certain number of uh, technologies, your diminishing returns there. Um, mm -hmm. There's only so much time in the day, and where do you focus? You know, yeah. And sometimes it, yeah. it's good to throw some things overboard so you can focus on less. You know, yeah. one one yeah. great question that um, um, that um, I'm blanking, but prior prior guess was posed was if there was if you could pause everything and if you could just do one thing with sheets and giggles. What would it be if you spend like 10 hours this month you just get all the noise out of the way you're gonna do one thing uh, do? cj was the one who asked the question yeah oh cj is my old brother's name too <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> probably shouldn't have called it out in the <laughs> recording yeah. whatever uh uh Yeah, whether it be a technology to introduce, whether it be to maximize, you know, optimize one you currently have. Uh, you yeah, it's actually even more general than that. We would just focus on copy. Copy is what made our company good. We're witty and funny, and as long as those two things are there, and people find a genuine connection in there, they will excuse a lot. Um, there can be like typos on the site, or like, like like i don't know a broken module on the site or like an email that has a broken footer i don't know people are like yeah. i don't really care as long as it's funny and then we'll make fun of ourselves afterwards too if we send like an oops email or like whatever um we love to be mercy about everything i mean your your name is sheets and giggles <laughs> yeah <laughs> fun fact the i think the name came before like colin came up with the name before he even realized what he was going to sell so it kind of came backwards that way, which is really funny. Um, but it proves that memes can become dreams. Uh, <laughs> hey. <that's not. laughs> Have you heard of Donald Miller? He uh, his he wrote the book Story Brand, and the name sounds familiar. Entire it, you mentioned copy. Highly recommend um, checking out his his stuff. It's all about the right message and and understanding how you're communicating to your customers. And oftentimes yeah. you realize we're communicating entirely the wrong thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You... That's actually one of the interesting things that, that that we realized recently. It was that like some of the things that we're saying are really funny, but don't necessarily speak to our demographics or like affluent women millennials are kind of like our core demographic um affluent of course is <laughs> kind of relative uh uh but i won't go into the politics of finances but oh uh, well, dude you gotta check this out because that's the whole thing it's like what is gonna yeah. make at the end of the day how do you make that that customer group look like the hero yeah in their yeah. household you yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it's so important, especially with stuff like home goods and, and bedding. It's like people want their house to look good. And we're, we're trying to find the balance of like 
how do we show them that our stuff is elevated and lovely and like softer than silk and more sustainable than cotton and polyester and whatever else uh, but can still make their house uh, uh, aesthetically pleasing but also like people can stop by and they're like oh you have lovely sheets and then they're like oh I got it from sheets and giggles and then they have this funny conversation about like oh <laughs> that's a really funny name what let me let me talk about it so it's it's uh trying to find that balance of like the surprise and delight the puns with this like elevated aesthetic you know okay. with subversive funny stuff yeah you're gonna love this you're gonna love donald miller's stuff then yeah, yeah absolutely yeah check it out uh, and you, you don't even have to get the book you can do the online he's got all his, his stuff but yeah yeah uh, yeah it's a like, you know, they you know, people you know, <laughs> it's like you think about like hotels. You want someone to feel like stay at your house is like at a hotel. You're like, ooh, yeah. you're like, we were at a hotel. You like check the mattress to see like, oh, what mattress is this? Or like, oh, I actually, I actually don't check the mattresses for like what type of mattress it is. This is like, this might be an anxiety of mine. I check to see if they have bed bugs yeah. <laughs> every single time. <laughs> I've heard some horror stories of people dragging bed, bed bugs home from hotels. Yep, that's a real thing. They say you're supposed to wash your, what is it? You're supposed to wash all your clothes like right away or something. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you get home, you're supposed to like anything that was in your bag, you're supposed to toss it in the laundry. Yeah. Um, uh, I will say that like one funny thing that the Sheets and Giggles folks have been doing um, is anytime that we go on a work trip, most of us will bring our own sheets because that's better than the sheets in the hotel. (laughs) Is mentioning hotels are you looking at like wholesale channels yeah we're trying to break into it right now um our vp of business development has really been reaching out on like offline channels so stuff like wholesale opportunities or getting into like target stores or whatever um i'm not privy too much to, to exactly what's going on there but uh uh, we are definitely trying to break into that space, um, especially with like Airbnbs and stuff like there. I don't know if we've managed to get this rolled out yet, but uh, there's like a platform that you can sell like stuff at a discount kind of kind of wholesale to like Airbnb yeah. owners. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. I'm trying to find little micro opportunities where we can. Which would then fall on your plate to market and yeah. bring to market. <laughs> always. <laughs> <laughs> and then I mentioned the B2B because now, you know, with, with all the platforms that you now can, you know, have a B2B arm, that channel that you're managing for the site, yeah. um, which adds more to your, to your marketing plate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the more the merrier. <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're coming up on, on time here. Um, mm-hmm. Is there, did you have any questions for me? Um, before we close up shop or um, any annoyances you can throw them right by me you got me right here i can anything i need to prioritize <laughs> any support tickets <laughs> i need to prioritize yeah uh <laughs> i was actually talking to our account manager the other day um and like i was realizing that i, I this isn't a complaint this is <laughs> me talking yellow again because i i'm so obsessed with just you know um uh, and I'm not doing this to shill people. I'm just doing it because I actually love just, you know, <laughs> uh, being able to just like have all of those segmentation options and and the flexibility and design and like being able to add custom JavaScript when we need to, to like get scrappy and uh, update code or whatever. Um, and just having access to our account managers at just, you know, even if we don't meet with them regularly, we're still like, if I have a question, I get an answer in like two days at the most. Um, usually it's the same day. Um, uh, and y'all have been one of the most consistently positive business relationships that I've had throughout my entire career. And wow. that's why I am so wow. obsessed with repeating with y'all like I drag y'all along with me everywhere I go <laughs> well, thank you yeah that's so, a huge compliment we really appreciate it yeah it's worth the money people <laughs> get just doing <laughs> <laughs> um 
have uh have you been introduced to the platform update to beta not yet i didn't even know there was a beta what's the beta <laughs> i want to one thing we're doing is we get we, we're revamping our or reviving our customer advisory group so i want you in it um okay. yeah, I, 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 i'm gonna have uh i'm gonna have robbie ping you probably um yeah two and a half years in the making it's live it's reimagined oh, nice yeah you gotta very see excited it. about that okay i'm gonna get i you haven't in. seen it yet yeah okay you're i'd love to get your feedback i didn't um, even hear about it <laughs> yeah well we've been we've been keeping on our wraps because we don't have our conversion scripts written yet for our current customers yeah because <laughs> yeah. you want to be able to transfer all your data over and everything so as soon as we have that yeah print it on for you um yeah cool frank really appreciate it your yeah time. i appreciate the time it was so it was so great just getting a chat and yeah. <laughs> joke about dumb <laughs> dumb stuff <laughs> i'm gonna follow up with the marketing is not dumb yeah and uh i got i gotta connect with colin too he sounds like character so oh yeah yeah colin loves doing interviews and networking uh yeah, if you if you toss me an email after I'll I'll CC you on uh, a response with him and connect y'all. Well, it sounds like he's created a great culture there and great team. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sheets and Gills is like I know we're still a small team, but uh, this is not bias, I guess. It probably is, but it's the best place to work. <laughs> Although I've heard Just Uno has like Fridays off, so that's great. Yeah. Four day work week. Yeah, <laughs> it is my Friday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, how, that, but. how big is your team real quick uh about 10 10 people uh if you don't count any part-timers um that's marketing uh no that's that's the entire team we're we're right. really small yeah we're really small really scrappy driving a ton of revenue with as few people as possible while staying within 40 hour work weeks um that's why i'm so obsessive about automating so yeah anything that we can automate and make easy for everybody is like not it's not even just i want to do it it's a necessity for the business well i can't wait for you to see our our conversion automation workflows nice i'm yeah. excited okay all right you're gonna hear from robbie very soon great all right frank well we'll have a great weekend um enjoy enjoy your sleep yeah <laughs> yeah i get lots of it <laughs> yeah all right cool all right well uh thank you everyone for tuning in um Frank from Sheets and Giggles, and we'll see you next week. Bye.